Hello, how are you doing? Um, I have a real problem with hides on nature reserves. And this morning I've come to RSPB Blacktoff Sands, which runs along the uh, mouth of the River Humber, or the edge of the River Humber. And I'm gonna try and cure myself of that, but I'll explain why I think I have a problem and what I might be able to do to solve it when we get inside. So I think first we ought to start with what the positives of, of these hides are. And um, I think first you've got a nice elevated position, which means you can observe things for a long way. They tend to be set high up so that you can see out and you know, you've got a good view for a long distance in front of you. So if you're using your binoculars and you can see something literally a mile away, over the top of these reeds here, it'd be absolutely fantastic. They also tend to be set up where they know certain species are going to be and also they'll engineer the area in front of the hide so that it brings that type of species in. So, you know, there might be a lagoon area with um, shallow water for waders or there might be a deeper area or there might be a reed bed where you might get um, bitten or whatever coming quite close. So that's what they try and do is engineer the the area in front of the hide so that um, you know it works best for this for certain species and um, in front of you they've got a list of all the birds that you'll see in spring summer autumn winter from this particular hide so it's absolutely fantastic as a, as a learning tool as well um, to enable you to get all that information and have it directly in front of you if you know really nothing about it then you know there's enough information there for you to have a good solid day learn quite a bit without actually taking anything else with you other than you know your binoculars they're also warm and sociable so you will get other people coming in and you can have a natter to other people and find out what they've seen and where they've seen it um, you know they might direct you to somewhere else and say oh yeah we've just seen this down there it's showing really well so you can head off to a different hide or they might say oh if you stay here to a certain time the last few days we've seen this coming in so you get all that information you get to talk to people which is a, a you know a, a wildlife photographer a lot of the time is can be quite a lonely experience because you're out on your own for large parts of the time right now i suppose the bad thing that um, i probably struggle with and need to try and get over is is a lot of the things that are the good things to be fair the hides are set up for certain things and i think the most important thing to take away from that is that's good because you, you know you're going to get a view of the species but that's not always the best position to get good photographs from so as i mentioned earlier an elevated position well you know that's great for seeing the things but for instance the classic one for me is if i'm doing waterfowl ducks or geese on the water i want to be down level with the water when i'm taking an image because for me if you're taking images from above there's an immediate disconnect between yourself and the bird whereas if you're on the same level you can also sort of blur the foreground blur the background and make your, your animal stand out as well as getting that eye to eye contact that for me makes an image much more engaging than one where it's it's taken from an elevated position you also don't get to choose anything so you know the, the background is the background you've got whereas if i'm say i'm wanting to set up a hide for kingfishers at home I'll, I'll select the perch i want so the perch that i think complements the bird the best so it might have you know moss or something on it depending what effect i'm trying to achieve i can also choose the background so you know, I can make the background complementary to the bird or, you know, something that really contrasts with the bird to make it stand out. Um, here, you know, obviously you're dependent on somebody coming in and, you know, if they're doing something like kingfishers, they might just find the first stick they find and stick it in the ground. It's also probably lower down again, so you're not getting that engagement. So, yeah, that's why I've always steered away from hides, but I'm hoping today that I'll be able to sort of get over that and and maybe find some reasons to use hides more often. So what my plan is today is to spend all day, and I've started at, I think it's the Use Fleet hide, which is right at the one side of the reserve. Basically this reserve runs all the way down the mouth of the Humber and it's a massive reed bed in front of you. So you've got all sorts of possibilities. You've got loads of waders, loads of ducks, um, all sorts of wildfowl. You've also got marsh harriers, and I think they've got hen harriers roosting here as well at the minute. Buzzards, kestrels, sparrowhawks, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it, it could be quite a good day. Got really overcast conditions today. Uh, potentially, we might get a little brightness coming through, but we'll have to wait and see. So, flight shots, you know, it's going to be a really dull grey background uh, with the bird in front of it, but 
we'll see what we can get and you know you'll see throughout the video if if i've achieved anything um any images that i like um that's the problem i have is you can get, always get images but are the images that you'd want to put on your wall i've always thought well you know if, I, if, if i'm going to put an image on my wall if i've created the hide i've set it up i've put it where I want it to be for all those reasons that I've said so that I want the background I want, I want everything as I want it for that image I've got in my mind um, and then I get the shot then that's something I'll put on my wall but here I'm you know I'm just taking what I can get really um, and I'm, I'm beholden to what other people have done as regards setting this hide up I've got no choice over the background it is what it is so we'll see but yeah if I get some nice shots then that's going to encourage me to come back and uh, do this type of thing again. Well, be believe it or not, I've had about an hour in this hide already. Um, it's been really nice actually because I got I got distracted by some shoveler and some teal that came in front of this little island in front of me, and uh, I've just really been watching them for nearly an hour and taking a few shots. I'm not sure how they've come out, but it's just nice to watch the behaviour. And uh, yeah, once I got into watching them and. Um, yeah, they did come quite close, as I say, in front of this little island in front of me um, on this little tiny stretch of water. So it's been really enjoyable just to do that for now. I've not seen an awful lot else. Although, to be fair, I could have had marsh areas flying over the top of me and I've just been looking through the camera photographing these. So uh, what I'm going to do now is head off to one of the other hides, uh, the next one down, um, and see what I can get there and hopefully get towards sort of when it's getting to dusk for the hides right at the end but so far it's been really enjoyable and I'm, I'm surprised at the images if these images you know come out because I am higher up than I'd like to be for taking these pictures but uh, they look reasonably nice to say the dull weather we've got um, they look quite acceptable so yeah we'll see what happens at the next hide but um, yeah we'll go on to the next one to the second hide now and um, this one there's no wild fowl in front of me at all um, I've got a heron and one thing I picked up on straight away is and I know this from from other things like um, Attenborough Nature Reserve near me uh, a wildlife trust site is you get loads of people taking fantastic close-up shots of herons well where I live on the River Trent literally if I go within 200 meters of a heron it flies away and what I've realised is that what these hides will do is they'll get animals accustomed to people coming into these hides and opening the windows. I mean, literally, there's a heron over there, stood over there. He's not moved when I've opened the windows, when I've shut the windows, when I've come upstairs. He's just basically stayed where he is, and that's simply because he's used to people being around. So I was taking photos of him and then a kestrel floated across, so I quickly switched the A7R3 to uh, my flight shot settings, but I wasn't quick enough to get a picture of the kestrel, and he's gone and sat in a tree over there. But luckily for me, as I was doing that, a marsh harrier came over the top of the reeds. I managed to get a few quick shots. As I say, the weather is not great today, but what I've done is this hide here has a upstairs section. So what I've done, I've come upstairs so that if I get something floating across again, I might be able to shoot a little bit more down on it to get the reeds behind rather than the uh, bland white sky, but we'll see. Uh, because there's no wildfowl in the bottom, I'm not shooting across to get any pictures as close to on the level as I can, but yeah, so far it's absolutely fantastic. Um, really nice to see a, a marsh harrier. Um, not seen one for a while. Um, I usually see them at Langford Lowfields near me, just across the river, but um, yeah, to see one within sort of two hours of being here is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I really like this hide because you get a good view over the top of the reeds. It's absolutely fantastic when you know you've got marsh harriers, hen harriers around. I can actually see the marsh harriers perched probably half a mile away on a post 
but I can just see it in the distance. And I've had to make a look through the binoculars just to make sure, yeah, and it's perched right over there. Um, so because of that, it means I can keep my eye on it. The kestrel came back and perched, and I got an image of that, which I'm, is quite nice. As I say, I'm having to shoot at really high ISO today because there's not much light at all. It's one of those days where it never really gets light, and uh, hopefully, you know, my DxO Pure Raw that I'll, I use will uh, be able to sort of bring these images to life. Um, I think I'm doing all I can as regards getting the actual image, but yeah, to get something more then obviously I'm going to have to try and bring it out in that and you'll see that anyway throughout the video with the images that I post. So. Another big advantage uh, for hides, particularly this hide and the way it's set up, because there's an upper section which puts you above the reeds, is the visibility. If you want in flight shots, you can actually see what you want to shoot a long way in the distance. Whereas if you lower down, often you know you're more among the reeds, you can't see until the thing's almost on top of you, and then it's a little bit of a grab shot. Here, poten the potential is, is if you see it flying sort of half a mile in that direction and it's coming towards you you can lock the camera on and just follow it all the way up taking shots all the way obviously once it's in focus and and you've got the focus on it it's much easier to follow it from a distance rather than if it just appears you try and get the thing in you know into the viewfinder and take the shot it's obviously much more difficult to do that really quickly here you can just lock onto it a long way away and then just follow it up i've got that marsh area is coming back And just illustrating what I said, I've got him in focus already. And he's coming this way at the minute. How close will he come? Not close enough, he's veered away. Oh. For a second I thought he was coming straight over here. Damn it. Let's see what he does. He's still floating around. He's going away from me again, though. One of the most difficult things to do when making these films is to decide whether you're going to film or whether you're going to take um, stills. And because I haven't got loads of images of Marsh Harriers, I'm sort of concentrating on the stills, but I'm also aware that it'd be great to get some footage as well. So we'll see what happens. It would just be great if he'd just come over these front reeds here, but but that's two. And I know I think they said there's something like 11, so that roost here at night. So hopefully that won't be the end to them, but I'm, I'm sort of fixed here now for the minute. I'm really enjoying it being in this elevated position, but uh, I think you could probably stay here all day and just wait for that one shot. And I might end up doing that. I might, it would just be nice to go and have a look what the others are like, just in case they're better, but it's always a risk, you know. Um, I'm enjoying it here. That heron's still sat, stood down there. It's sort of striking a pose. It hardly moves for ages. But yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I don't know what to do now. I'm, I'm certainly going to stay here for a little bit longer just to see what happens. But um, We'll see. I might head to the far hide because I think that he gets a lot of sightings there as well. So we'll see what happens. Hello everybody. I'm back in um, this hide again. This I think it's called first the first hide, rather imaginatively, something like that. Um, I've been 
to Townend Hyde and then I think it's Singleton Hyde which is right at the end. Now looking online recently it looks like Singleton Hyde is the Hyde to be in because that's where the majority of the marsh harriers and even hen harriers seem to be hanging around. The Singleton Hyde at the end is level with the top, it seems actually quite low and there's about six photographers in there at the minute um, because obviously they've all heard that's where all the hen harriers and, and marsh harriers etc are and trying to get a shot but for me if you get them flying in front of that hide, you're going to be pointing up. All you're going to get is this really bland, horrible sky behind them, which is never for me going to be a shot I'm going to put on my wall. It's just not. Um, but I think here, there is just the opportunity that if I get one come over these reeds, and I'm not going to say it is going to do, but because they tend to hover if they see something and, and before they drop into it, Potentially I could get a shot where I'm cutting out the sky altogether, which would be fantastic. That's the sort of shot I'd, I'd like to get. So there's no point, you know, even though potentially there's more marsh harriers and potentially hen harriers down there, they aren't coming up this way. And for me, you know, I'd rather have one decent image taken up here, even though, yeah, perhaps the chances aren't as good at getting them coming up this way. Uh, the volume's not going to be as good, but if I at least if I get a chance of that shot I'm after, rather than getting 30 shots of them in the air with a bland, horrible white sky behind it, which I'm, I'm not really interested in. So, again, it comes down to when you get to these highs, just making the most of and wanting and looking for the shot that you're after, rather than going for volume and uh, you know quantity over quality, as it were. But we might not get anything, you know, I'm quite happy with what I've shot today already considering the conditions and I am getting to like these hides in the way that, um, as I've just said to you, you know, there's a potential for a shot, all right, I might not get it, but then that's the same if I'm out anywhere, you know, I might not get that shot. Um, but it's worth just sitting here and seeing what happens. I'll give it another hour or so, perhaps two hours in this particular hide. I'm not going to go back down there and we'll see what comes up and you just never know. Right, I'm actually going to record the end of this video a little bit early today, simply really just so I've still got some light. Um, I'm going to stay around for a little bit longer simply just to see whether anything does turn up but <laughs> to be honest I'd like to say I'm losing the light but I've not really had any light all day. It's, um, it's hardly got light to be honest. All I can say is I've really enjoyed it and um, yeah, I think I think as regards hide photography on nature reserves and uh, wildlife sites goes, I think if you assess the place and don't compromise on the type of shot that you're after, so try and um, not be happy with just a, a shot from a hide that maybe is not what you were looking for, but try and find the hide that gives you the best opportunity to get the shot that you were after in the first place and uh, it may be that you have to visit numerous times to do that but I think if you spend enough time at a hide like this one you will get to know the movements of the birds or animals and you'll see the potential for the shot that you think yeah that's one that I'd put on my wall and uh, you know I think that's what I've done today if I could Definitely when I come back to this reserve, I think this is going to be one of the first hides that I go to simply because of this elevated position. And I do have this idea in my head of a, a marsh harrier basically hovering above the reeds just before it drops. And I think with that I can mainly get all reeds in the shot, no sky, um, which I think will look fantastic. That's the sort of shot I'd have on my wall. I mean, yeah. It's not an easy shot to get and it's not guaranteed, but on this reserve, this is the hide I think that gives me the best chance of getting that. So this is the one that I'll always, I think, return to first um, if I'm looking for that shot. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope, um, you know, if you struggle with hides or if you, if you go to hides at the minute and you're not happy with the shots that you get, then hopefully just a few other tips in here about trying to assess the hide will help you get the best out of the hides um, that you go to and pick the one that's going to give you the shot that you're after. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Until then, take care.